Good morning, everybody. I'm going to be sharing a, um, a stewardship experience, if you will. So I'll uh, just introduce myself. My name is Tracy Lampkins. I've um, been a member of the church for sort of forever, um, but I uh, just wanted to share uh, an experience with you um, regarding stewardship. Um, to start with, uh, I read uh, the pastor's letter on stewardship, and if you don't have one, they're in the back of the sanctuary. Um, but one, uh, one of the scriptures that she references is 1 Thessalonians 5.18. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. And that in all circumstances, I think, is the part that, that really kind of stuck with me as I was thinking about it. And I wasn't quite sure, okay, well, what should I share? Should it be something about the youth? I spend a lot of the time with the youth. Should it be something personal? I couldn't quite figure it out. And then last Sunday morning, I actually had the perfect experience. So before that, the Sunday before that, go back a little bit, I took a trip to Home Depot. I was going to purchase an item, right? So I get there, and the trip was horrible. The store was packed. There was nobody that could help. The items I wanted weren't there. It just felt like a, a just a terrible trip. It was a waste of time, and I was like, okay, well, we're going to try again. So I went home, and I prepared the whole week, looked for the items I wanted, made sure they were in stock, checked the aisle and everything. I was prepared for this trip, right? I had thought I had covered all the bases. So last Sunday morning, I get in the car. I'm ready to go. I head out. I get on Lakeshore Drive, and I look around. Huh, there's hardly anybody out here. It's a beautiful day. And there's hardly any traffic? What a miracle. All right, I'm just a smiling, got my music going, and I'm going. And I keep going, and I'm getting kind of curious that there's no traffic, and I start to get a little concerned. And as, as Miss Audrina put an announcement last week about someone, I don't know if any of you knew what was happening last Sunday? The marathon. So what looked like, oh, how beautiful, there's no traffic. As we got further, closer, it didn't look so good. Every exit was closed. And so I've got my little map. I'm going, and it's trying to redirect me and redirect me. And this exit's closed. This exit's closed. And I'm getting further away from my destination. I'm getting concerned. I had really prepared for this trip. I thought I had done everything that I could. And so now I'm all the way up north. And then the map sends me to Lower Wacker. If you're from Chicago, you know Lower Wacker, oh man, I know I'm going to be lost at this point. So, and if you, if you use a map and you go to Lower Wacker, your map starts to spin around like you're in the Bermuda Triangle. And so at this point, and I mean, I'm, I'm getting frustrated. I'm starting to sweat. I'm starting to tear up. I'm, I'm, I'm just really, really nervous. And it's, it's really kind of feeling overwhelming at this point. What I thought was going to be an easy trip that I had prepared for was just really going left. And so I had a friend with me that was on the trip. And they could see that uh, I was a little distraught at this point. They simply put their hand on my hand. They said, you good? And I had to take a breath at that moment because I realized I was, I was not really very good at that moment. And so I took a breath and then had to think, OK, OK, am, am I good? Can I be good at this moment? And so at that point, I took a breath. And that just those two words made the difference to me. And so I was able to, OK, where are we going? It took us way out of our way to get there, but by the time we got there, the store was empty because no one else was able to make it, apparently. But the store was empty, so there were tons of sales associates that were able to help us to either find what we needed, and they didn't have everything that we needed, but they were able to give us advice and attention. And if you go shopping recently, you know that a lot of the time, people aren't really there to help you because they're so spread so thin. So what, turned, what started out as something that I thought was going to be, I planned, I prepared, and then I was way off on this detour that looked like it was going to be insurmountable for what I wanted to do. Then it turned out being even better by the time that I got there, because I persevered and was able to make it through. I share all that story to say that um, <clears throat> there are many times in different situations that we feel overwhelmed or that we're not quite sure where to go. How are we going to make it through that? And can we be that person, that hand that says, you good? Kind of that, that check-in. And so what I'm asking all of you is, is can we be that you good? Can, you, can we be that person that is checking on? And so obviously stewardship is dealing with how are we, how are we assisting the church? Are we, is it a financial donation, a time donation? What is it that we are able to contribute to the church? And so 
If you know me, you know I like a little activity. So in your bulletin, you have a little arrow. So in this, this little arrow, if you don't have an arrow, I can get you one afterward. The little arrow is simply to symbolize what is it that you are overcoming? What is it that you are able to move forward through, to move past? How are you able to be that God and help others and do, other, and do for others as, um, as God would want us to do? So <clears throat> my request is that on your, little, uh, on your little arrow, you're writing down a way that someone has been that hand for you in that situation, that are you good? Are you able to make it through? And on the other side, how are you able to help the church? Thinking how are you able to check in on the church to make sure that they're good? With our stewardship campaign, there are various ways that you are able to help. Of course, we are always welcoming your time and your caring and however that you can contribute. Specifically this month, we're doing um, our pledge donations, so we're wanting um, people to donate for, um, to make a pledge. There is the, the pastor's letter and there's a pledge form in the back. These items are also available online. Ms. Audrain shared with us that they're in the newsletter as well. If you don't get the newsletter, you can easily Google United Church of Hyde Park. QR code comes up, just click on it and it takes you right there. So there's, there's many ways to easily donate. And I simply want to leave you all with the thought and thinking of um, <clears throat> sharing another little brief thing with you. Um, it was pretty personal. My father used to have a car that sat in his car all the time that said, the God in me. As a young person, I looked at this little card for years. The God in, oh no, pardon me, the God in me loves you. And I kind of didn't understand. I had no, as a child, I couldn't understand the God in me. What does that mean, the God in me? It just kind of washed over me. As an adult, I've seen this many ways. That hand on my hand, that was the God in that person, uh, helping me, loving me. How can the God in you help others? So I, I share that with you, with you to think of, how is it that you can be? How can you rise to your best to help others around you? Whether it be that helping hand to help someone calm down, or to be the one that is, that is donating, filling out your pledge form. What is it that you can give? And really kind of dig deep and think, how can you help others? And that's all I'm going to leave you guys with. Put your little arrow in some place that you can see and think about it. Use it as a bookmark or something, just to kind of think, how is it that I can rise up and I can help others? That's it, I'll leave you with you today. <laughs>